Hi, this is Lynn from lynnskitchenadventures.com and when I recently posted the question about box pudding versus homemade pudding, I had a lot of people say they had never made homemade pudding, didn't know you could make homemade pudding, or just didn't know how. So I thought today I would do a quick video showing you how easy, quick and easy, homemade pudding is. Now, I stayed with a really basic recipe today and I'm just finishing adding in some of the ingredients here and there's a lot of different homemade puddings you can make some take a little bit more work than others but today I wanted to stay really simple and we're just making a basic vanilla pudding and this recipe I love because you pretty much put all the ingredients in at the beginning there's no tempering the eggs I'll show you my trick for getting the lumps out of pudding here in a minute but this is really easy I have three-fourths of a cup of sugar a cup of cream two and a half cups of milk and four tablespoons of cornstarch in here. And I'll go ahead and print it, or have this recipe on my website too, so you can print it out. But it's pretty basic, just milk, sugar, cornstarch, eggs, and cream. Now you can use um, all milk if you want to. I like to add a little bit of cream. Sometimes I vary my cream to milk ratio. But as long as there's three and a half cups total, it, it doesn't really matter. I think the cream gives you a little bit of a creamier, richer taste, and it just makes the pudding a little bit better. You wouldn't want to use all cream, but um, it, half cream or a little bit less than half cream is really good. But like I said, you can use just milk. Now, homemade pudding is a pretty basic, old-fashioned dessert. I think many of our moms and grandmothers and even great-grandmothers made it because it contains everyday ingredients. We all have milk, sugar, and eggs, and cornstarch in our kitchen. They're just basic, everyday ingredients. It's a good last-minute dessert. Now, it's not cheaper than box pudding. I will admit that. You can buy a box of pudding for less than a dollar and add some milk, but it tastes so much better. You can control the ingredients that go into it. You know what goes into it. These are this is real ingredients. And it doesn't have the artificial taste that box pudding has. I've never been a fan of box pudding. And I um, I just like the taste of real, it's real, you use real vanilla. You, you, you know, when you make homemade chocolate pudding, it's real chocolate. It's not the artificial taste of the box pudding. So I think it's worth the little bit of effort that it takes for homemade pudding because it, it really is easy. You can make this in like less than 10 minutes. So I'm just stirring this together. We're just waiting for this to thicken. This is pretty much the hardest part. You just have to stir and whisk constantly. Over a medium high heat, you don't want it to boil too much, but you just wait for it to thicken. And you don't want to walk away. You don't want to walk away to answer the phone or the door because it's got milk in it and eggs in it. It will scald. So you really just need to just continue stirring it constantly until it thickens. Now I know many of you had said that you had never made homemade pudding. I grew up with a mom that made homemade pudding all the time. I don't really remember eating much box pudding at all until I was probably a teenager. And I mean we had it at friends house and at church things, but my mom always made homemade lemon pudding, homemade vanilla pudding, homemade chocolate pudding. So I, I grew up on it and I've never, like I said, I've never been a fan of the box pudding, but I know many of you love it. But um, this is really starting to thicken. If you could come in here a little bit closer. You can see this is really actually boiling too much here. But it's starting to really thicken like pudding. Now it'll thicken as it cools. So this won't be as thick as like a box pudding right away. But um, I'm going to take this off the heat because actually I had it too high. Because you don't want it to boil too much. But this is starting to really thicken up. So you want it to kind of have that consistency. A little bit thicker. We'll let it go for just a minute longer here. But you can see just whisking constantly. Turn that down. Now it's really pretty much done here. I'm going to go ahead and take it off the heat. Now once it's off the heat, you add a tablespoon of... Getting a knife here. You need to add a tablespoon of butter and a tablespoon of vanilla extract. Now I'm using... I'm using um, homemade vanilla extract, but it has a lot of vanilla because this is vanilla pudding. You can use whatever. I like my homemade vanilla extract, but it's vanilla pudding, so you want a lot of vanilla in it. You want to give it that vanilla taste. Now, this won't be the color of box pudding because this is real color. It's no, There's nothing in it to add color, so it's not going to be quite the same as a box vanilla pudding color-wise, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, a homemade butterscotch or a homemade chocolate's not going to be quite the same color either. Now once you get a basic pudding down, I've got a homemade butterscotch pudding on my site and a homemade um, chocolate pudding on my site. You can do coconut. We like to layer this with fruit, eat it with raspberries or strawberries in the summer, so it, it's pretty basic. Okay, now I'm going to show you my trick 
for straining out the lumps. Now there are tricks that a lot of people use that you can temper the eggs, which is where you add the eggs to a little bit of the hot ingredients and temper them and then add them back into the pan. I find this is really the easiest where you just add all your ingredients at the beginning or everything except the butter and vanilla. But And then you at the end, in order to strain out any lumps that you might have, you just put it through one of these fine mesh strainers that many of us have in our kitchen. Clean that out better in a minute. But you just put it through here and then you have the pudding, you have the lumps <clears throat> and stuff in the strainer, but the smooth pudding is in is in the uh, bowl. So I find that that's really the easiest, best. You really don't waste that much. As you can see, there's not much in the strainer, pretty much just the lumps. So the other trick with homemade pudding is it will develop like a film or a skin on the top. So you want to take saran wrap, plastic wrap, and cover it right down next to it, put it right up against the pudding. So that way as it cools and as it sits, it won't form that film or skin on the pudding that so many homemade puddings form. And then you can just scoop this into little containers or bowls, serve it with fruit. You could layer it with bananas. And it's really easy and really good. You can serve it warm or cold, so I hope you enjoy that, and I hope it inspires you to give homemade pudding a try. Thank you.